Good morning. Thank you for joining The Wind Show. I'm glad you tuned in today. I have a wonderful guest that's here with me today, and she has an exceptional, wonderful event that's going to be happening on September 15th. Tenaria Drummond Smith. Thank you for coming on The Wind Show today. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's been a delight. You have got to tell us about this Women on the Move. You got to tell me all about how did you get started with that? Well, actually, it started out in Brooklyn. I just wanted to um, get women together and that we can fellowship and just talk about um, things that might have happened in our lives okay. and that we can just share and just being around like-minded women. Now, being around like-minded women, which I got it, but you got to tell me about you. How did it get from that point to being able to have a vision of that size? Because your vision is, is huge. Well, basically, um, I started, actually I had started out doing my events in backyards and then it actually started growing, you know, by word of mouth, mm -hmm. my other girlfriends telling another girlfriend and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. And then people actually started telling me, Tenaria, I really believe that you have a ministry because we started pouring out, you know, different situations and so on and so forth. So that's actually how it had started out in the backyard. Wow. And it grew from that to where? Actually, it grew from the backyard to me started <laughs> renting different um, places and all, mm -hmm. and it's become, it started becoming a, um, a sellout. Okay. So from that point on, I just had a, another vision to do um, an awards event for women. Okay. You know, it's interesting, and you know, we talk to women all the time. I'm on my side, you're on your side, but then we come together. But you know what? The truth of the matter is we all have a story. That's right. And that's what's so awesome about it. So when you were in your backyard and how it transitioned, but what's the story behind all of that? Well, actually, it had started out me um, visiting other women's group, and I did not like the way that um, things that were transpiring mm -hmm. in different women's groups. You know, it started. I started seeing like favoritism, fits favoritism in different women's groups, and so on and so forth. And I just didn't like the way that some women were being treated and not being recognized for the things that they were doing in the group. So I decided that I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to do something a little bit different, where everybody um, is being showcased in my women's group. Wow. Or some women on the move. That's wow, women on the move. I, I thought about my story, and you know my story, mm -hmm. and. Um, Years ago, I would have never imagined that here we are today, we're sitting on this platform, yes. on television, that God would take something and make something out of it. But that's just like God and what he does, though. God took a passion that's been in your heart, and look at where it's grown to. So now, you got to tell us about, before I move on, tell me about Saturday that's coming up. Saturday, it's a, a long-coming vision that I had for women. Mm -hmm. um, giving back to the women that are in our communities, in our churches, in our homes, and um, allowing women to pour into themselves and also into others. Okay. You know, so basically that's what the, um, the awesome Women on the Move Extraordinary Women's Awards is about this coming Saturday, September the 15th, and we are so excited about it. It's gonna be beautiful. Yes. It's actually gonna be beautiful. One of the things I find with women is that um, oftentimes women don't know how to celebrate someone else. And That's you, know, you know, I teach and mm -hmm. I talk all over the country, but one thing I try to stress is, if I say, example, if I see somebody, like I said to you this morning, I said, you are absolutely beautiful. When I look at you, I see Thank beauty. You. And Thank oftentimes you. as women, we are taught to self-hate. Yes. And when you self-hate, you're really spewing out something that's really how you might, you might not necessarily feel that about the person, but we're taught to be like that. Why do you think we do that as women? I think sometimes, um, with women, um, we deal with some sort of like low self-esteem. You know, it could be based on um, their shape, their mm -hmm. colors, the, the color of their skin and how they wear their hair, exactly. or wanting to be married when, because they see somebody else is married. You know, so I just think that sometimes that could um, actually play a part of how women are feeling towards other women. So, in dealing with that, when women uh, were taught to self-hate each other, I, I can remember as a child growing up, and you know I tell my story wherever yeah. I go, because I'm right. not ashamed. That's right. Um, I didn't know how to embrace, um, uh, I guess, compliments. Right. Like people say, oh my goodness, you're so whatever. Because because of the self-hate, even though I was a young kid, right. it started in elementary school. And this, so my mom said to me the other week, she said, do you remember so-and-so? This is one of my best friends. Right. And I remember having a best friend, and she turned on me. Mm. I don't know why my mother brought that up, but 
I thought back to narrate, let me, it made me go back and think, why? What was it about me at a young age that people, could, sometimes people can see what you don't see. That's right. Like people can see, like I can look at you and I can see greatness, I see what you're trying to do. But other people can see that too, so they may try to stop you in the process. What do you do for, to, for yourself if you feel that somebody's trying to stop you from what you feel you should be doing? Well, I would have to say I haven't always been the way that I am. Okay. It's, it's been a process for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I also experienced a lot of different things my own self growing up. And you know, um, in high school, junior high school, I could never keep any friends, not understanding why I could not keep no friends. And then I would actually ask them, you know, when they want to attack me, I would actually ask them, you know, what have I done to you? They could never explain to me why. So I too um, actually had to deal with some things like that my own self as growing up, you know, not feeling um, not being able to fit in with everybody, you know, so I, I too struggle with that as well, you know, as far as growing up and trying to keep girlfriends and right. so on and so forth. It's been a challenge, even today in my life. Okay. Yes. That's interesting. So now you said it's still a challenge today. Is it something different that you do within yourself? Because when I went through it, I grew up literally, and you talked about something earlier, dealing with low self-esteem. Right. I never saw the beauty that people saw because my esteem was so low because I saw myself the way people saw me. Mm. And it, I love the word you use, process. It was such a process. And I'm not talking about being a beauty queen because I'm not like that anyway. Right. But what I am saying, I value myself. Yes. So when I walk, it's not an arrogance. No. It's not um, like you're better than somebody else. No. But it is a self-confidence, understanding that I belong to God. That's right. And God belongs to me. Absolutely. So how do you deal with that even now that it's in your, you know, even now you said you kind of struggle with it. Well, what I come to realize, and as far as like reading the Bible, it gave me confidence to know that I'm not actually dealing with people. I'm dealing with spirits, mm -hmm. you see? But at the end of the day, I still want to show them love. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gonna uh, act the way that you're acting towards me. So I know that sometimes um, people can be uh, rude to you, but at the end of the day, you still have to kind of show love to them. It's true. You know? It's really true. The scripture that came to mind was the scripture that says that we are accepted in the beloved. That was such a great scripture for me to ponder upon as I was developing, because mm -hmm. I believe that we're constantly growing and yes. developing, um, to understand that sometimes people won't accept you. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. But God accepts you. That's right. And when I teach women and when I do classes and different things like that, I try to really like hone in on that because I think that's important. But you wrote some interesting books. <laughs> you gotta tell me about these books. Tell me about these books. Tell me about the first one. The first one you wrote, I've Been Hurt in the Church. Tell me about that. Well, actually, um, I've Been Hurt in the Church. Um, I, I always wanted to write a book. And I, I'm beginning to see that God does things in timing. Okay. You see? But being hurt in the church, it started out when I was a child. Mm. When I was a child, okay. um, growing up in a Baptist church, I noticed um, that there were favoritism in church. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I would actually question to God, if you are a true and living God, how is it that people treat other kids different than other children? And I, I struggle with that a lot. You see, mm -hmm. so one day after praying and fasting, I said, the Lord, I heard the Lord is clear as I'm talking to you. He said, you're going to write a book. I said, well, Lord, I don't know how to write a book. He said, you're going to write a book about your, your experience, your past experience in the church. And that's how um, I've been hurt in church came about. Yeah. What about Love Grounded? Love Grounded by Grace. <laughs> right. Love Grounded by Grace is a co-author book. And it has different um, women that are in the book who are testifying about their different stories. But in the chapter of Love Grounded by Grace, I'm gonna have my, um, my entire story about mine's dealing with um, verbal abuse. Oh. 
So that's what my chapter in the story is about, and love, grounded, and grace. And that entire story will be coming out sometime next year. That's beautiful. Yes. I wrote an excerpt of my book, and I'm dealing with the keys to forgiveness, mm. living the abundant life. Yes. Um, that was a big part. That, that the forgiving part in my life as a child, forgiving my stepfather who molested me all those mm -hmm. years, and you know, just trying to you know get through those things. Where has forgiveness played a role in your life? It is like I said before. It's, it was a, a challenge. I never thought that I can actually forgive someone who have um, called me names, mistreated me, told me that I would never amount to anything in life. You know, so it actually just by the grace of God Amen. that I was able to forgive. I never thought that I would be able to forgive um, people in my family, people who I encountered everyday life with, with my girlfriends, and so on and so forth. But I know it's nothing but God that has allowed me to um, to speak to them, to call mm -hmm. them, even when they don't call me, to, to tell them that I love them and never getting, uh, never getting a response back to the, from them. So I know it's God. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with me. It's all God. When I first realized, uh, Tanari, that forgiveness had taken root, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, what's the saying that people say? You know, I forgive you, but I'm Don't not going to forget. forget. <laughs> That's all the time yes. what people say. Right. But that thing really took a root in my heart mm -hmm. one day. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't just want to forgive my stepfather. I wanted to forget. Meaning that I couldn't, of course, you know, there were scars and different things like that. But when I say forgetting, I'm talking about not allowing it to take root or take a place in my life anymore. What I knew when it kicked in was when um, I saw him, This oh my God, this is years and years Jesus. and years ago. I was in a drugstore in Hempstead and I saw him. And I remember at that time, I remember my legs began to shake. Oh, and I felt like anxiety wow. gripped my feet, came up through my body. But then later on, so I was at a funeral and I saw him, it didn't move me. That's when I knew forgiveness had taken place. Wow. And it was such a strong emotion because you're talking about from three years old to 12 years old, oh, being molested all that time, mm -hmm. you know, it really was such a driving force and it misguided. I like to use what misguided my life mm -hmm. because you don't know what to do with yourself. I mean, you're a child, I mean, right. you're a baby. And um, when that forgiveness took root, that's why I can go and I, you know, I've gone around the country and internationally and I can literally speak about that forgiveness because I finally got there. But it's a process. It definitely is a process. Um, it teaches you how to, when the forgiveness comes up, you understand when the Bible really does talks about you have to forgive others so that the Lord can forgive you. That's right. It really does come to life. It does. You understand what I'm saying? It does. Because if by chance he gave his self, gave his life to the Lord, yes. he was forgiven. Right. And another reason why I wanted to hone in on forgiveness is because it was controlling my life. Yes. That's something yes. that I dealt with as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's a portion in um, my story uh, Love Grounded by Grace, um, it, it's actually, it's written about my grandmother, my biological grandmother, um, how she would um, call me names and so on and so forth. And um, once I really um, started out um, understanding who I was in Christ, I would call her to ask her if I could pray for her. And she would tell me that you need to pray for yourself. My grandmother died on my birthday, August 16th. That was about five years ago, five or six years ago. So she, I don't know if she, you know, just so happened to just die yeah. on my birthday, but she mentioned that's what she would, you know, that I will never forget her. So you do have a story to tell. Yes. Interesting. Yes. And you said, when is your book coming out, the next book? Uh, 2019, okay. next year, next okay. year. And yes. what, do you know what it's going to be about? Or you want us to wait so you, we can be excited yeah, about it? Yeah, you're going to have to wait. <laughs> you can't wait. I can't you're going to have to wait about wow. it. Wow. How did you decide? You know, you have this big event. We kind of talked about it a little bit coming yes. up on Saturday. How did you choose the women that are going to be awarded and honored that on Saturday? Well, actually, that, I think that was a little easy for me. Okay. Um, actually, I prayed about it mm -hmm. and just wanted to award women that I see that wasn't being awarded. Like I mentioned before, in our churches, and our homes, and our schools, and just giving uh, women an opportunity to um, give back to those who might have imparted in their lives. So, you know, making the um, the questionnaires and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. it it wasn't a challenge, but it's done well. Right, that's I would say.
How do you feel about mentorship? I actually never thought about that. <laughs> And let me tell you why I'm bringing it up, because as we're sharing today, and this is such a great story to talk about, uh, mentorship came up because a lot of times when we have things that we've gone through, people will look at us almost as the example as to what they see life could be like. Um, I've had people say to me, oh my gosh, she's just such a lady, and this and this and that. Now when I see myself, I understand I am a lady, but... I don't sometimes see what people see. That's right. And you could be walking in this the way about you, and I'm learning, and I found out that mentoring women has been something that I've been called to do. I, I can definitely say that. How do you, that's why I say, how do you feel about mentorship? Because our stories are not things that are made up. Right. They're real life issues and things that have taken place. And I am a firm believer and not keeping that stuff to myself, but That's using right. it as a tool right. to be able to help somebody else. Right. So then you have your mentees that are looking at the mentor to say, okay, if you can get through this, then I can get through that. So that's why, how do you feel about mentorship? Well, I think that I could perhaps yeah. do that because yeah. I can only um, tell them by my own personal experiences, mm -hmm. you know, and all of us exactly. coming together and just sharing. Mm -hmm. Where does women um, on the move? Where do you see it going next? Yes. Well, it's been told. <laughs> it's been told that the ministry is somewhat like um, Joyce Myers. Wow. I've actually seen it my own self in, in the spiritual realm that God has taken me to um, that level in uh, getting women together and just doing wonderful things for His glory. Wow. That's yes. Good. That's okay. So it's just the process that it He's is. doing. So that's where we're going to be looking forward to yes. the next event coming yes, up. Yes, absolutely. You know, I am so, I'm delighted that I'm actually going to be attending. Yes, you are. My husband and I are actually going to be coming to fellowship and enjoy. And I want, I'm telling, I'm the kind of woman where I want to sit there and salute whoever God uses. And um, I find it to be such a valuable tool in celebrating other people. Yes. So we will be there to support you, to see what God is doing with you and your husband and this awesome, awesome ministry that he has before you. It's going to be profound. It's actually going to be really profound. So tell me about some of the young women that you work with. Well, actually, the young women, are, they, are, they are too funny. They are. Young women, actually, I'm trying to get them to open up to be authors as well. So I'm trying to get some young women to want to, you know, talk about, you know, their experiences, you know, as far as going to school and the struggles that they're having as growing up into older women or, you know, mm -hmm. you know, dating and wanting to get married and so on and so forth. So I'm trying to get some young women to get involved and wanting to share their stories mm -hmm. as well because we all have a story and Everybody. a testimony. Everybody. Yes. As you were sitting here, can I tell you what dropped on me? Yes. My journal is my journey. Because I'm a firm believer in journaling. Yes. And I teach women and girls, you know, when we go out, yes. to journal. Right. And your journal becomes your journey. Yes. And every step of the way, there was, I would say keep that journal right on by your bedside. Oh, yes. And I you do. jot down, and that's how these stories are birthed. And yes. Yeah, that's how they come to the things that they come into. And even like a Joyce Myers, and I, and I love Joyce Myers. Yes. When you hear her story, yes. I mean, it, is so, it is absolutely profound. Yes. But her journal has become her journey. Yes. And I think that's what's so great about it. Oftentimes, women are not taught to empower one another, to undergird one another. Why do you think that is? Because then women like to tear each other down. Why do you think that is? I, actually, I think it's something that they might have been taught down the years. As far as growing up, not um, being able to compliment each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As you were talking, you know what I thought about too? Inherent behavior. Yeah. Like, like, and I love the, what you said they're taught. Because in our families, we were um, coming up, we were taught, which we talked about self hate, no, you know, you don't love yourself, different things like that. Right. But we also, communication does play a good, a, an important role in it. Um, I think talking makes a big difference, talking it out, because we can have received ideas. And our perceived ideas or our perception right. could be totally wrong. Right. It could be, oftentimes I tease, I like to joke about this, somebody could be walking down the aisle and stay for instance, their mind is just on, oh, I gotta hurry up, I gotta get home, my kids gotta do this. You know, as moms, we'd be all over the place. But somebody else can receive it as, she didn't speak to me today. Oh, she had an attitude. But why does it, why does the negativity have to outpower the positivity? 
As a, again, I, I would think it could be a um, lack of uh, two parents in the household. Mm -hmm. um, their father could Very have nice. never told them that they are beautiful. Uh, the father, they could have heard, have heard their uh, father um, making a mother feel less than a woman. So all these things could play a part as far as, you know, them growing up and not, how, not understanding that they could have affected them, you know, growing up as women. Mm -hmm. As a little girl, my, my mother was physically, emotionally, and verbally abused. So her transferring it over to me, it was never any type of uh, positivity in a sense. She was never abusive to me. Right. But the loving me as her only daughter, she couldn't do because she was so broken. Right. And so I thank God that he, God came into my life at such a young age because I really feel like my mindset could have really went in so many areas of not being able to empower other women or, you know, you know, teaching them that they can uh, do all things with Christ and strength and stuff. That's right. And that's probably why I compliment women so much. I'll be like, you are absolutely beautiful. I always try to find something to compliment a woman about. Yes. And another aspect for me is that maturity. Yes. Sometimes it takes inward maturity for somebody to recognize that, you know, it's okay to go ahead and be positive with someone else. And that's when the racial lines come in. That's why when you compare yourself to someone else, yes. I might not have long hair. I that's might not right. have, you know, like you said it earlier in the show, and it was such a great point. I might not have light skin. So we grow up thinking, oh, I don't have all these features and there's something wrong. I taught a class with some young girls called Mirror Mirror. And I cut out a bunch of pictures of young ladies that maybe Somebody may not think that they were beautiful, and then I've cut out some models. And I, I made a, I had each girl make a collage. Wow. You would be surprised that majority of the pictures that were on the collages that these four girls made mm. were of women that mm -hmm. they thought would look better than them. Wow. And so it's a, almost a preconceived mindset That's right. that our young girls are taught. But then here we are, grown women. Yes. We have to help change it. And I was just going to say, I've actually... Um, giving women um, compliments and just telling them, you, I think you're really mm -hmm. beautiful. And then I actually had someone tell me, oh, you're just saying that. You see? So yeah. it's, it's... Because they doubt themselves. Yes. They don't believe that. They don't believe themselves. it. So uh, one of the chapters in the book that I'm writing is called talking about the value of me. The value of me and understanding I am, you know, I'm worth it. I am worth it and I am valuable. And again, and I'm not coming from a high-minded point of view, I have taught myself to understand because God made me yes. I'm special. That's right. I'm very special. So That's I tease right. my husband all the time. You know I'm special, right? <laughs> so I tease him and I tell him that all the time. But it's really true. But imagine how many women, if we had a round table right now, and there's a bunch of women sitting here, and we talk about how we can empower one another. That's right. Do you know the kind of healing, inner healing, emotional healing that can take place just by one conversation? That's right. It can, be, it can really, really be wonderful. So I think that's something that as we both have ministries dealing with women, Absolutely. And maybe we can hone in on even a little more Absolutely. and trying to help another sister become. That's it's what not it's racial. all about. It's not even about a race. No, thing. it's not. It doesn't matter color. It doesn't matter any of that. We're women. That's right. We're women accepted by God, and that's what we're trying to do. Absolutely. Now, in 2019, we have your book coming out. Anything else you want to share with us, or do we just sit and wait? Because well, I know you got a lot of stuff coming up. I do, I do. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm hoping to have my book, I've Been Hurt in the Church, to turn it into a play. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, so that's something that I'm really um, working on. I would like to work on to have the, um, the story turn into a play. Okay, and what direction would it go? I mean, what, what would be the message behind it? Um, because at the end of the day, Right? The Bible talks about you got to love your neighbor as yourself. That's true. So at the end of the day, what would be the final journey on that? What would be the conclusion? Um, conclusion of forgiveness. Yeah. Basically forgiveness and so just taking people how I went from one place to the other and mm -hmm. how I came out of it. Yeah, so that's what it would be about. That's going to be good. That's going to be really good. Anything else you want to share with us about you? <sighs> well... Um, I'm a designer. I have a, oh, a, a, a crocheted line that's coming out um, the end of this month that's called um, the Swag Shoals. Nice. Yeah, Love so the I, Love I'm a, a crocheter okay. and I have a couple of things that are coming out for the end of 
this month, so you have to wait to see that. <laughs> so I can't wait to see. Now, will you be able to people be able to order? Will it be online? Yeah, or? I'm on. Okay. I'm on, on Facebook, Facebook. Okay, um, social media. Yes, which is on, awesome. Yeah, on okay. Instagram, um, okay. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yes. Good. We are trying to get some things on um, SE. Okay. And also too, I want, I'm going to um, work on doing uh, a business on the uh, the website. Yeah. So you are a phenomenal entrepreneur. Yes. Oh, that's good. Thank that's you. excellent. Yeah. We have a wonderful event coming up September 29th here. I mean, at the Long Island Marriott. Right. Where my husband is the host, the creator of it. Right. And it's called the Long Island Entrepreneurship Conference. Oh, wonderful. And there, as a young businesswoman starting yes. out and having different, you have so many wonderful things you're doing. You can go there and actually glean. And there's some good tools he's actually going to be teaching. And Love it. We, uh, we have a keynote. It's, it should be really, really nice for those that are um, starting out in business or already in business. Right. As you know, we yes. have several businesses going on ourselves. Yes. So it should be really, really amazing. Awesome. It really should, should be really, really good. All right, so I'm going to look forward to the crochet line. Yes. So I can put my order in. Yes. I'm looking forward to the book. Yes. Anything else I can look forward to? Just make sure that you be there for September the 15th oh, for the Awesome Women on the Move we, Extraordinary Women's Awards. We are definitely going to be there. Yes. And do you see it having different chapters? Oh, definitely. Okay. I'm, I'm already, once we're finished with this, I'm already working on for two, 2020 mm -hmm. to do another series of the awards event. Okay. So I'm just trying to take it to a, another level, but just trying to get it back to um, give back to the women in the community. Okay. They got the Grammys. They got Black Girls Rock. They yeah. got the Music Awards. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. Why not That's the awesome, awesome Women on the Move awesome Extraordinary Women Women's on Awards? Well, and there's so many things. As I, I'm telling you, as I'm sitting here listening to you talk and I see you, I see so many things coming out of this. Like major nice things coming out of this where women, because that's how they come up with cancer survivors. Yes. Different things that they're doing. You have an awesome tool that can actually fix a whole lot of things. Wow. It, yeah, you really do. So I'm actually looking forward to that being, I'm going to be, yeah, we'll be there on Saturday. It'll be really, really nice. Thank now, you. if you had something that you wanted to say to encourage young women, to encourage women of all ages, to teach them how to hold on, you talked about, we talked about forgiveness today. If there was something from your heart, mm, from the depths of your heart, that you wanted to encourage somebody else, what would you say? I would just encourage them um, to just keep going forward in the things that they have, um, that they vision, that they had a vision to do, um, just continue on um, striving to do the best that you can do. And uh, write down your visions and your dreams. Mm. Write them out, write them down. Um, Connect yourself with like-minded people, like-minded women, someone that who can pour into you, and just never give up on your dreams, because all things are possible. All things. That's beautiful. That is. That's interesting. I love what you said. Write it down, because the Bible does tell you to write the vision. Yes. And make it plain. That's right. And that's why I asked you about mentorship, because I know you can see people coming with what they wrote down, and you literally taking them under your wing. Wow. Allowing them the opportunity to expound upon it, to become everything that God wants them to be. And that's why I wanted you to say something to those women that are out here, that hear your voice, that hear my voice. Yes. That might want a part of not just what's going on. See, we don't want people to jump on the train because it's, it's already out there. That's right. You want people to look at it and say, wow, I want the healing process that took place in her life. And there is a difference, not the tangible, right. but the internal. And that's the difference, and that's what I see with people and this women on the move. It's awesome. It's going to be phenomenal. Phenomenal. A very phenomenal event. Thank wow. you. Well, I just want to thank you today for being on our show. Oh, my goodness. You don't know. This right here was a wonderful, wonderful surprise for me, and I am so glad you accepted the invitation to be on the show today. And when it airs, I, I just can't wait. I, I can't wait for it, to, uh, for it to be everything God has said. Now, remember, September 15th, we're going to be there as women on the move as we allow God to do what he has called you to do. So I just want to thank everyone today for taking a look into the wind show on today. Listen, this woman right here, you don't want to miss her. You better catch her while you can because she's gone some places. But thank you for joining the wind show today. We're going to see you next week. We have another wonderful guest and a wonderful topic that we'll be talking about. See you then. Bye-bye.